to the Assembly Winter 2016 to the last match of the night. I am very sorry about the delay, guys, but some matches can go on for quite a while. Lorinda, you know about that, right? I was going to say, these slow <laughs> players, right? What can you do? I know, um, it's really rough. Um, seriously, uh, Ixie got through and um, Orange lost, so Ixie will be playing Orange. Everybody knows who Orange is, plays for Archon. He won four big tournaments in the last sort of eight months or so. He's 21st in the all times prize money list for Hearthstone and all around just really, really powerful player. Ixi, on the other hand, to contrast, I was looking up earlier today, he plays for Inside Games. Uh, there's seven players on their team and he's the captain and that's all I got. <laughs> I'm okay. afraid, Ixi, sorry about that dude. Well, we'll find out as the as the set progresses, I guess. Um, just to give you some background on the classes, uh, Ixi, uh, or Zixi, are we calling him? Sixy? Ixi. Ixi. Uh, he's playing Paladin, uh, Druid, Warlock, and has a Warrior band. Um, and Orange is playing Hunter, Warrior, Paladin, and has Rogue band. So Orange's Rogue is banned. Ixi's Warrior is banned. And um, Orange taking Hunter seems to be a standard, right? Yep. He, Orange has been doing really well recently. He did uh, pretty well at Dream Act Winter. Uh, and has been continuing to perform, which is, you know, uh, the, the mark of a good player, right? You know, like, consistency in Hearthstone is how you should really rate someone's skill. Winning yeah. one tournament, very good. You know, like, you are good, right, if you win a big tournament. Continuously performing is the hard part, right? Or the really hard part. Yeah, and it's not just the winning. He was third in um, the Star Ladder Star Series. He was um, fifth in Seat Story Cup, the recent one. He's been, yeah. He's not just been winning. He's been coming second, fifth, eighth, first. Yeah, just, just doing really well. Yeah, it's just consistent placements. Because, like you said, it's something I know that a lot of people, uh, a lot of the casters, especially along the lines of like, say, Nymph, Frodan, Lothar, they, they, they want everyone to realise that it's not all. First place is obviously the celebrated finish. You won the tournament, but consistently dropping in like top eights or top fours. Is actually insane. Like in, yeah, in these tournaments, it's actually insane, right? To consistently just just place is is crazy. It really is. And that's why I wanted to point out he's like twenty first in the money list because if you go, what's Orange one that was massive? And it's like nothing. He just won everything. <laughs> he's yeah. like he hasn't won a hundred grand in one hit like some of the world champion, for instance, or um, the Chinese stuff. But he's just constantly picking up five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars, you know, and that's just crazy. Yeah, it really is. Just it's just consistency, and he's not even looking like he's, uh, you know, he's gonna stop with any of this. So we are actually just gonna get into the game now. <laughs> and uh, again, bear with me while I'll update the scores. If you want to go over the uh, the mulligans, Linda. Yep. So Orange is playing Hunter, and Ixie is playing Warlock. It looks. It doesn't tell as much, but there's a Swamp who's in there and a Twilight Drake, so it's not Zoo. It could well be Reno, that seems to be one of choice, and I mean, this comes down to, if it is Reno, which we don't know for sure, like, does he get the healing or doesn't he, to a large degree, especially now Orange has Mulligan into a pretty decent curve, he's got Lepidome into Haunted Creeper, and he's got Hounds for backup, he's got another Creeper. Yeah, It sounds okay as well, though, with the Mortal Coil and a really nice 2-3-4 curve. Yeah, I mean, uh, just going on the Hunter from Orange, like, this seems just, like, straight away Orange's super standard hybrid Hunter. Um, he's pl He plays this regardless. Like, just almost in every tournament he plays in, he uh, he, yeah. he uses this deck. So, it's got to be expected from uh, Ixi that, you know, he knows what he's up against here. And like you said, the, the weapon removal from the Ooze is pretty nice. Even being on the coin is decent to just get, maybe he can coin into Twilight Drake and then into Shredder if he really wants, even though Imp Gang Boss is a nice drop on three. Maybe even Imp Gang Boss now wouldn't be terrible. Yeah, he's got a lot of twos that he wants to decide between here. Obviously, the Dart Bomb making the most sense mm -hmm. there. Um, I think in Gang Boss could be okay, though, actually, because then the mm -hmm. trade from the Scientist creates you a 1-1 one, one that can then prop the trap. So that could have been reasonable. You know, If you know Orange's list, you know he plays uh, Freezing a lot of the time. Yeah, and if you're in a group with Orange, you've got to expect you're going to have to beat him to get out of that group. So um, people will probably have done their research, you know, checking out the list and stuff and realise he plays this a lot. Um, is he going to go coin into fours and possibly into another four next turn? So, mana efficiency there. Like, I think that's why he didn't play the gang boss, so he could go two four four. 
yeah. as opposed to like two, three, and then maybe not have a, a decent play on turn. Three. Yeah, this is going to be really rough though. Orange is in such a good position. The freezing trap's there, and the warlock doesn't normally run any or many charge minions at all. Um, so this this Twilight Drake is just going to get bounced. And uh, Orange just builds up the board. The Huffer gets another attack <gasps> in and is still safe. Shadow Flame changes everything, though. <clears throat> it's a really good top deck there. Now he's just got to decide how he wants to do this. Um, because he has the option to just play the maybe the Swamp Hoos and the Protector to make sure there's something there after the Shadow Flame. Or he can just Shadow Flame now, but that doesn't really stem the tide because then the two spiders come back and just you start doing it again. So it's a really awkward decision to make um, how he wants to set things up here. Yeah, and this is like the position the hunter wants to put a, a, a deck like this in because, like, as you said, like if he shadow flames now, then you know something gets bounced, right? You know, he, something yeah. else gets bounced, as you said. So like it just super delayed. He does go with the taunt, which what he wants to do now is taunt, not attack, and then try and bounce his his Sun Fury protector, and which is much really more reasonable. Greedy. With the swamp hoozy as well. Yeah, but then you know what? When orange just top decks an owl, <laughs> you know that that's also a pretty good play. I've heard top deck in yeah. silence on a uh, Twilight Jake, and he's even choosing to play unleash, which is really interesting. He he has like an easy pick off and pushes for more damage because of the one attack minion. Yeah. But he's unleashed and not hero powered, so he did. He sort of like gained clear and plus one damage but lost two damage but he still has pretty next turn lethal though so i mean he doesn't I mean, he does if nothing can be killed okay so we've got the freezing trap up and he's got 12 damage so he could afford to do that and just clear the way i think that's good because it means that the freezing trap now has only one minion to concentrate on yeah so there's no easy way without removal which we can see there's the shadow flame but there's no easy way to avoid the, the lethal from Orange's perspective. Yeah, and the uh, issue it's is... It's turn before Reno as well, which is also important. Exactly, yeah. And the issue is Reno isn't even in hand. Like, if it was in hand, then maybe Shadow Flame and just hope. Hope against hope. But the issue with, like, Shadow Flame now... I mean, he doesn't have many more options, to be honest. But with Shadow Flame, he does clear. Potentially, prox like, activates a second trap from the Scientist. Um, and he actually decided that he was going to lose anyway i think there if if it wasn't yeah if it was freezing trap i think he decided he's just gonna lose he's gonna try and clear everything while he could yeah because the issue um, is he leaves the one ones up after the shadow flame and then that's already like four damage and hunter or especially hybrid so... uh, can actually push for quite a lot of damage anyway yeah he tapped into siphon soul which would have been able to buy him some time um he is still alive here that was interesting that he did decide to do that. And now, now he's, he's very dead. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, no, it was lethal anyway. Right? Was it lethal with, anyway? With hero power, it was lethal anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, never do cast a maths at home, kids. It's yeah. It's something you try not to do on stream, or at least I try not to. No, never try and just do quick maths or even semi complicated maths, which is all Hearthstone maths, right? Yes. <laughs> complicated sums so that's the hunter out of the way so just leaves him with paladin and warrior um ixy has still got that lock he's got paladin and druid himself so he's in a bit of a spot already here yeah because... nothing feels too good to be honest for me there's no like guaranteed especially like especially like just one one game loss there's still like potential two decks left and you have three to try and deal with it is yeah. kind kind of rough to try and uh, work out what to take and i think that there are points definitely in conquest where you have the attitude of it doesn't really matter what i queue up at yes, this point definitely at times i think at this point it was slightly different because this warlock is good against both decks so um it's probably best to try and get it out of the way doesn't really matter because you've still got to beat one of them anyway but if you happen to lose this, then at least you've got a good matchup next. Yep, and then we uh, see in Orange's hand the uh, Golden Avenge, which is uh, not going to be used too much in the future. That may, that may find a disenchant from from Orange's deck, potentially. Uh, but we will see. Anyway, um, Ixie's actually throwing the whole hand, and, uh, and actually not got a great hand at all. Uh, Twilight Drake always feels good for turn 4, but versus Secret Paladin... It can just be too slow sometimes. Yeah, he'll want his previous hand back from the last game. Yeah, and especially when there's cards like, obviously, uh, Noble Sacrifice works in the same way that we saw Freezing Trap work uh, in the previous match against the Twilight Drake, where it just burns a whole turn, and then you're doing nothing, and that's already on turn four. That's a great top deck, though, because now he can tap, and then next turn, a lot of the time, he'll have the Mortal Coil to pick something off, and another tap. And the Soulfire's a bit of insurance as well, so... 
It's not the greatest hand, but it can soon change into an okay hand here. Yeah, so Minibot looking pretty nice. He can. He's very flexible next turn. He can, Whether he chooses to wait coin, uh, wait on the coin for Mysterious Challenger maybe to accelerate that, or he has the flexibility to coin out Shredder to build the board, then go into Blessing of Kings on the Minibot potentially. Um, all depends on what his opponent drops, but as we can see, there's just there's just nothing. I mean, he could coil Dark Bomb, but that is just too much of an investment, I think, this early in the game, just yeah. to deal with a 2-2. I think he's tapped up quite a lot now. So next turn, he can Twilight Drake, take a bit of a hit. And then turn 5, he has Soulfire, Dark Bomb, Mortal Coil. He should be able to do stuff with that. and Or even, you know, maybe use this Mind Control tech on turn 5 with, say, Dark Bomb or Mortal Coil. Um, he could do that now. He could he could MC Tech now and Mortal Coil a dude. But then your turn five is kind of awkward because what do you do? Do you then Twilight Drake and Soulfire on turn five and risk getting rid of Sylvanas or Boom? Yeah. So it's... I think he might just take this turn to take a beating if he thinks he can take that and just drop the Twilight Drake. Yeah, this is definitely risky though. Um, if he had like Reno or a Healbot, this is a no-brainer. Um, but you know, like with with no no actual healing in hand. It's definitely scary here, and now he's going to just take a Blessing of Kings. He's uh, going to take a beating um, to the face here, but... Oh, yeah. Orange sent to be clearing. Um, yeah, that makes it a lot harder to deal with, obviously. And So now what do you do? Do you just soul fire Dark Bomb and get on with your life? Or... Hmm... <laughs> It's really tough. He to does that, you he, play but, Swamp Who's but, first as well. But he has Molten in hand now, so maybe that changes everything. Maybe you draw first. I think that's okay. There's no way of taunting the Molten at the moment. But yeah, draw first is fine. Now he's good. Yeah, and the thing is, like, even without the taunt, being able to get off even a Molten Giant for, say, three mana and do something else in the same turn feels sure. good. Um, what do you do now, though? You could play the Swamp Who's and taunt it up, for instance. That's pr really bad, but... It would be able to enable you to clear stuff up. Yeah. Um, you right. want to spend all your money. You don't want to tap, I don't think. Hmm. Maybe you need to tap. That's the problem. Maybe you need yeah. to tap into... You need to find Reno. Because if he finds Reno, his hand is suddenly amazing, right? Yes. Because he has so hand. much stuff. He just got loads of stuff to do. <laughs> he has the Molten Giant to, like, the flex. Um, maybe, like, Swamp who's, like, into tap now is okay. He is going for the taunt. He's going for the... He's playing he's very got afraid. Bomb. Yeah. Because he's got the dart bomb, he's hoping there's no cock hammer, and he's going to be really upset when he finds out there is. Um, but I think that play was okay. I just didn't like it as much as as maybe others because it could clear the board and set up a decent play next turn. Yeah, I actually prefer just coin challenger here and then kill the three two. Coin like, challenger. You've got to wonder why he's done this though. Yeah, I just think like what's it, like so so the problem is if uh, the problem for Ixie is if if orange coins challenger then he runs in dart bombs and you get the mini bot back yeah as, as a divine shielded two two uh, two one again that's clever so. he, he's seen through what's going on there that's really well worked out by orange um so he's worked out there's the dart bomb and now um he's realized that ixy sort of possibly is a bit low on removal by making that play he worked out that three damage was going to be the dart bomb i think he's i think he i think he saw that through that and now He's just really chosen to put the span in the works at the right time with Lothar. Which is the second Lothar we've seen today, by the way. Yeah, Sylvanas is a pretty nice answer, though. Because nothing deals with these minions well. You know, like, you can't, like, kill both your own minions and kill Sylvanas without it right. stealing. So that's uh, kind of kind of nice. And let's be honest, Ix is still on 22 health. Paladin isn't really known for its burst. So uh, it's still feeling pretty safe and has Molten. And every single turn that ticks, we're getting closer to Draxus, which is a heal in itself. Yeah, and I mean, Orange will just be expecting a very a Reno to happen very soon. So, just getting some damage in there and making it hard for the traps to be propped. Obviously, if he leaves two minions up, then everything's a lot easier here for Ixie. Yeah, in before attack with Sylvanas, then Dark Bomb Sylvanas. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a thing you could do. Uh, you, you attack with Sylvanas, then you MC Tech, and then you Dark Bomb, right? Well, if you want to get fancy about it, Lorinda, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you steal two things. But he could dart... Uh, yes, that's true. He could, but he could dart bomb Chow Argus. So, let's see what gets stolen here. Assuming there is, yeah, there is. I didn't check. There is a redemption. Yeah, the redemption is there, yeah. 
the, I think it's the standard that's come spirit as well. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, so I think UMT take. He's probably just counting his mana. See what he wants to do afterwards. He no, if you steal this nine eight. Okay. You've got the dark bomb to start tidying up. And if you don't steal it, you you probably steal dark bomb. But oh, not terrible. Second best. You can of course just defend with Argus your own stuff here as well. Interesting, he chose to put the MT Tech on the left, which means that yeah, he can't. He he could have defended the Sylvanas from behind them, or chosen to put her taunt. He's just going for the play we called though. The yeah. Steal a thing. How much better would just dart bomb in the low that be there? I suppose you're afraid of the damage, right? Yeah, I think this actually gives you a chance of just winning the game, like next turn. Um, if you steal the 10 9, well, it would have been a 9 8. And then you'd have had Soulfire to get rid of the Lothab anyway. Yeah. I think yes. it was the plan. So do you like Boom here, or do you just like Coin Tyrion and help you? And you've seen you've seen the use, right? So your weapons effect fairly safe. Yeah, and weapon seems a really good thing to have here. It's 15 damage. You, you, you're, you've got a plan that you might need that extra damage because of Reno. Or maybe there's even a point for Dr. Boom uh, Coin Avenge. Potentially, yeah, that might. Because you have so many minions on the board, you make it progressively more awkward for your opponent to deal with. You're facing 16. Yeah, he's playing, so he's going to go with the boom. That makes is he going to coin out the events? I think the thing here is, if you're not coining this turn, like his coin just never going to be played this game. That's my worry. Unless you want to coin Avenge when you play the Tyrion, because they have to kill the Tyrion, and there's no way. Yeah, they you just overwhelm them with threats. But yeah, I see what you mean. I think I'd have coined the Avenge. I'm not going to argue with Orange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you know, we'll, we'll let Orange do his thing. He seems to be doing uh, doing okay. And yeah. there's the Reno, by the way. Just while we're chatting there. Yeah, this um, is huge. So he just taps Easy Molten into Reno. Uh, yeah. This game just got pretty brutal. But the thing is, like, he can... and Well, actually, this is really key. And this is why the Avenge could have been nice. Um, because now his board is terrible. Orange's board. Yep. Uh, versus a pretty scary looking board whereas if the Avenge came down then you know the, there's a 4-3 bomb, a 1-1 one, one bomb and then you follow up with stuff right exactly half his deck's being used as well but yeah you're right um, his board is now awkward and he's giving the Noble Sack so that's why he wanted to save the coin okay that makes sense so he saved, he saved the coin, did he have the Noble Sack no, I think it, he right? drew into it right? he drew into yeah. it, okay, so that doesn't work as an excuse <laughs> thinking about uh, the excuses because now he's actually going to struggle to proc this shield because of the noble sacrifice um, but really does he just shadow flame at some point here and eat a bunch of damage and then heal again with Juraxis when he gets low again I mean it's pretty it's pretty possible actually so he can let me think he can attack what does he do he say he saves a 4-4 four four, but the bombs probably probably kill uh, I think Reno, right? he just draw a card and then taunt some things to be honest you might take this shield off with something I don't know actually you you, you don't want the molten giant to take a, a 6 damage just taking off a divine shield if you could help it do you not just attack and then shadow flame the uh, molten though um oh now he not can, now you don't <laughs> now he can potentially demon wrath uh, and, heal and then molten. heal his own molten up. depending yeah. on where the bombs go though that's the scary part here he is going to take it, and then he is going to... Yeah, this is like the safe it's option, safe. right? Yeah, makes sense. And then we just heal Reno. Yeah. So now the Paladin's... The Paladin's got a lot of work to do now, actually, because he's. we've seen Dr. Boom, we've seen Tyrion. Yes, the Ashbringer is live, but as we can see, Orange is actually going to start clearing minions with it and not exactly push for, for like damage to face, which I think is the right move um, in terms of uh, clearing the minions, not the damage to face. Uh, but Secret Paladin kind of normally runs out of juice. There are some variants that run, say, Ragnaros as like, one more threat. Yeah. But um, with Boom, Tyrion, and the Mysterious Challenger gone, you've got to start thinking it's uh, it's getting a bit grim. Yeah, he's used... Um, and that might be the next game. He's used basically everything apart from one Mysterious Challenger, most likely, like you say. Ragnaros is... It's played reasonably often, but... Ixie's got so much life, he can just draw a million cards and presumably win the game with those million cards. Yeah, and uh, just looking at the, the deck counts, he's got 11 cards left, whereas Orange is on 13. 
factor. He does actually have the time to to tap and it not be you know too detrimental to his uh, potential fatigue. And he's I think he's thinking about whether to get greedy with that demon because he was just left a one one thing on the board. Um, but then he realised he was going to have the board, so he might as well not have a, a thing blow up on his on his shredder. Yeah, and so I mean, just drawn his probably his last chance is the extra challenger. Yeah, does he get any secrets? No, he's got none left. No secrets. So left. he does just get just like a potential avenge though. And wow. So implosion. See what happens is one option. I mean, it's just how you want to do it now. When. When games at this level sort of get to this bit, is how how the player sees it a lot of the time. Pretty much every person who's watching can see a different route to victory at this point. Um, for me, for me, it would be um, probably just implosion the six six and see where I stand, and then work it out from there. You yeah, can, I think you that's can pretty defend reasonable. your guys. You can defend all sorts of stuff. And the thing is, as well, with the implosion. Demon Wrath's just as viable as it is now because it doesn't hurt the imps. So you may as well implode and see what happens. He's going for the Demon Wrath first, though. What is his plan? Establish dominance. <laughs> um, oh, I suppose you run the Shredder in, right? Yeah. It's like... just get to, Then you save the implosion from something like... Oh, does he want to... Uh, hmm. Oh, maybe, maybe he's he... saving for potential... Oh, he's going to implode anyway. This is risky. He's very confident he can roll four and he whiffs and rolls two, so... I don't really... He wants minions on the board, right? That's, That's the reason. That's not the worst thing from the Shredder, right? Because you can Juraxxus and then Hero Power in the same turn now. Yeah, this is actually pretty crazy. Oh, no, you can no, because he can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, belt you off the top, but you know. This is interesting here. He chooses to play... Uh, he's choosing to play Avenge. The reason for that is if you cog the Belcher, it looks good, but when your opponent's got a 1-1 to knock the shield off, then the, sh the, the Divine Shield becomes plus one health. And not anything else whatsoever. This is really so. awkward. I think you might have to nether. I mean, you can tap and defend her, actually. Mm -hmm. um, because you know that Coghammer can't get through. You can't. He can't have Coghammer and. Oh, he can have Coghammer and the buff in his hand. Yeah, I think Draxus might be okay. Draxus, the Paladin's we... got one card, right? You know it's not a noble sacrifice because he's used double challenger. Yeah. Double sacrifice is gone. So, yeah, he's probably fine. And you've got the defender to, to buff the 6-6s six if you start getting scared. Yeah, well, the, he, he has two outs or two defensive uh, mechanisms here. He can either go into the uh, hero power into Argus to feel safe versus that, or he can just slam twist in nether. Like, you know, he's got, like, the ultimate fail-safe in terms mm -hmm. of just it will actually clear the board, along with his weapon, anyway. Good to see that Ixie's taking his time. Like, joking aside, because the last game did go on, but somebody in their, um, like... His first big tournament that I could find, at least. It's hmm. it's good to see he's not panicking and just playing really rapidly, which a lot of people end up doing the first time on a big stage. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, the, the the pressure is uh, can be pretty heavy when it's like your first big tournament. Um, kind of weird that he didn't kill the Belcher. Is he afraid of a redemption? Is that is that the issue? Do you think? Because I would have just hit the yeah, Belcher there. You we saw double three. redemption earlier in a deck, didn't we? Yeah. And... It's just so uncommon. It's like I don't know. I just wonder whether I play around it. Yeah, I think it makes sense to. When you're this far in front, you play around everything, I think. Because um, now, what do you do? Now, if you're scared of redemption, you've still got to nether now anyway. Okay, so yeah, he is scared of redemption, right? Because he's killing this first. Yeah, to then twisting nether. To twisting nether rather than the other way around. So he's playing around redemption for that. Yeah, either way, this is fine. You, you sort of play around Sorry. all the secrets by doing this, actually. Um, and now we can just follow up. Drop a 6-6 six, six on the board. The Paladin has to pull 6 damage out of nowhere. Is this where we're going to see Orange Rock Leroy? Uh, if anyone pretty... was going to Rock Leroy, it would probably be Orange. <laughs> the Shredder, <laughs> pretty nice pickup, actually. It's, um, we're at the point where uh, the Warlock can't actually really afford to take damage from, uh, from his weapon. So he can't really just run into the Shredder because he's not got any healing. So the Belch is... Amazing though, so he can Belcher and here and Hero Power still. Oh, and now just drop Voidwalker if he really wants. Yeah, he has the mana for that, right? Five, six, seven. Yeah. Oh, he's picking PO. That's interesting. Does he need to close out the game that quick when he can Belcher and Voidwalker and I Hero he's Power? That like... He might as well. Like if he's if it, like I was saying a minute ago, when you get to this stage of a game, everyone sees 
they see a path to victory and that's what they do basically um, I think this is actually playing around Doomsayer drops and stuff now I think he's in that that position yeah, where there's that's nothing true. else I mean, to play around if you can taunt up to two seven seven taunts then you're probably feeling relatively safe yeah you're, you're only losing to Doomsayer in some worlds so you might as well keep a taunt back in your hand just in case I guess but it's just at this level, if you can see a path of it, you just you just go for it. Yep, and the belch has been held just as a you know emergency backup. Yeah. Consecrate. Oh my God, is he? Is there any way he can actually win if he gets all the juggles? There's yep. one. Oh really. my God. Oh, there's one missed. Drama. Uh, and that's game. Happen. Imagine if he hit four juggles. Yeah, to I mean, face. this is oh why people like Orange are so good, right? He had a one in five, three times, a one in 125 chance, of, no, four times, one in 500 chance of winning that game. But that's a one in 500 chance that most people wouldn't have worked. Um, yeah, and you know what? Uh, even that sort of chance, you still go for it, right? There's no, there's no yeah, world in which you it. don't. And uh, one day, you win no one, one day that gets you to a, a top eight you weren't going to get to, and suddenly you win that top eight. You know, it's. Yeah, exactly. So, so one all. Yeah, and this is um, now the, with the uh, the Warlock out of the way has Paladin and Druid on his side versus Orange's own Paladin and Orange's Warrior. So, so down to the bit that people don't like about Conquest. You either get a Paladin against a Paladin, which obviously is sort of easy. You get Warrior versus Paladin, which is probably Patron versus Paladin, which is massively favoured. Or you get Druid against the Warrior the other way, which isn't so favoured for the Patron, although it's probably still favoured. Yeah, and Orange is probably going to be feeling pretty good about this. Getting the uh, the Patron Warrior versus the Secret Paladin is definitely the matchup he wanted to. Yeah, definitely. And the Paladin just has to go for it, from what I've seen on both sides of this matchup. You just go for it. If they make some Patrons and kill you, you lose. And that's it. It's Yeah, yeah that, nice, that nice in-depth analysis it. of this matchup, Lorinda. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but you that just... is exactly... But you're not wrong, obviously. Um, yeah, you just have to make things happen and hope. So the fact that Orange has uh, Grim Patriot and Despite in hand already is huge. Um, Nixie, on the other hand, has... He definitely has a lot of options. The uh, Noble Sacrifice can be frustrating for the Warrior to soak the weapon damage. Um, Creeper, Juggler... All things that get pretty pretty shut down by this ghoul, actually. Nothing feels good when uh, someone plays a ghoul on an empty board and you're playing Paladin. Yeah, one of the problems the Paladin has in this matchup is that everything seems to do one damage, and a lot of your things have one toughness, like dudes and uh, muster guys and divine shields, all, all are weak to the one. And even things like Acolyte of Pain are like a really annoying thing to deal with. Yeah, it's definitely rough. And now the following up with, as you said, the Acolyte of Pain, it just must just feel like it's getting worse and worse for Ixie here. This is just like exactly what you want uh, as the Patron Warrior. He probably wants to, um, or he probably will, excuse me, uh, just lock in the Death Spite. And he might even, even if this ghoul dies this turn or next turn, he might just go for the Patrons anyway because he does have the slams for the card draw. But, oh, maybe he wants to delay a turn now because of Whirlwind. Hmm. He's going to draw his card and see how he feels, I think, here. Um, by leaving up the 1-1, one, one, it gives him a chance to get another card at some point, I think. Yeah, he's going to set up a, a sick-looking board, I think. Yeah, it's going to kill the trailer. Hopefully, for Orange, it uh, is a low drop. Oh, um, and that's harsh for um, Ixie. Yeah, this is kind of rough. He, he can kill it off, though, right? I mean, he can, but it's just more of a thing he didn't want to have to do. Yeah, and that nice sort of little play by Orange there. He attacks in the Creeper because now to kill um, to yeah. kill the, the Mana Wraith off, Ixie has to like run the Mana Wraith in, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't have to kill it off, but he wants to most yeah. likely. He, he, so he puts the two 1-1s one, in. Um, either way... Yeah, he has to do it that way if he wants to kill off the acolyte. Yeah, every, everything's cleared, and the uh, and the acolyte draws two cards, which is really nice for Orange. That's definitely what he wants. And and if he chooses not to clear this board up, he doesn't get to develop anything. So he has to do something. Um, he can kill the things, play a repentance and a knife juggler or something. I mean, I think repentance has to come down this turn, because what you do is you force um, the patron player to say. Is that and you don't play the other secret either. You don't like juggler repentance and get down. You just yep. like juggler repentance and you yep. say look, right? If it's repentance and you play patron, you almost just lose, right? 
If it's not... Ooh. Oh. I'm not sure about playing both. I, I prefer, like... Maybe there's no... There's not much of a drawback to playing both. But I think, like, once the attack goes in and Avenge doesn't proc, then, yeah, you know, you kind of know. It's it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether Orange plays around this and he, he's going to. This is pretty good play. A lot of players would just go, you know what? What are the odds, right? And then just yeah. do it and then lose. But this is a nice play. He's in no rush. And the the reason Orange is able to do this is because Hixie has him under zero pressure, right? Yeah. If there was actually minions on board that he couldn't clear... Then it would be a bit, little bit different, I think. But this is a really good play. Now he can just pass, and he's yeah. still one turn away from Mysterious Challenger. So Orange can just do this play next turn and, and be okay with it. Yeah, and he's just got a, he's got such a good patron making hand. What else has he got? He's got Battle Rage, so he can do the patron thing. He might even wait till turn seven, so he picks up a load of cards. Um, he might not want to wait that long with the hand he's got, but. Uh, there is a chance he just waits till turn 7 and does things and makes more cards, but I guess without the inner rage in hand he won't bother, he'll just make 4 patrons. Yeah, I no think uh, the only realistic play for Mixie here is to actually just lock in that true silver and pass. Um, but you just can't really play muster into this board, Belcher just dies and you know it dies 100%. Yeah. The, the secret he's got up is Noble Sacrifice. I so... guess you could play the Belcher yeah. and hope they don't have a patron. Which makes them kill the Belcher. But, yeah, the, the, like, but it the, doesn't. Yeah, and, and the problem is, because of this Acolyte that you can't clear without playing Muster, then there's zero reason, because the Acolyte's on one health anyway, there's no reason why Orange won't attack him with the Acolyte first. Yeah, he's played the Belcher. I think he's just playing this in, have you got your patron? If so, well done. It's that, very risky. I think it's risky, but I think it might be the play to win. Like, the other route definitely buys him more time, but what does more time get him apart from dying slower? Like, this yeah, this puts something on the board where if he doesn't have the patron, you've got at least something going on. He's got the inner rage as well, now as orange, just to really make this terrifying. Yeah, do you make but, six here, right? You don't fill up, or do yeah, you? Yeah, I, th I think you just... Because what you do is you kill off the 5-1 to make the 1-2 get zero value. Yep. Um, because it's worthless to you, whereas you gain, you do gain the like the three one, so you can kill you can kill one off, but you gain more patrons, so it's like it's worth the extra whirlwind, I believe. Yeah, yeah, six is usually the right number, I think. Yeah. Um, but the the problem with this play occasionally is there's sometimes combinations of stuff that let the other player fill the board up with two toughness patrons and then do a consecration or something like that, which would leave you with only one or two patrons. This is fine because even if he had the consecration. Um, he would be able to leave Orange with what? Three, two, three ones? Two would be alive. Because he would bump first. Yeah, two. So six is greedy here, I think, but it's going to work out fine anyway. And again, I'm not going to argue with Orange. Yeah, and if um, if Orange does win this, he has his Paladin left, right? If Orange wins this game, he has Paladin left, yeah, which is Secret Paladin with Lotheb. And Ixie would have Druid as his other deck. So this is really tough. I think at this point, I mean, you do have Boom. So I guess you just play Challenger and play Boom. Uh, Ixie's on uh, a lot of health, but this is genuine, generally the yeah. point in which is the Paladin. You sort of sit there and go, I have lost this game. Yeah, the, the <laughs> thing I do here literally if I'm Paladin is try and work out how I can fill that board with three twos. It's like the only way you can get the out The issue of it. is, though, that's if Ixie even plays Consecrate. A lot of secret sure, Paladins yeah, don't. Don't. Like, that, that's one of the issues. A lot of Secret Paladins don't play Consecrate, not even one copy. So that might not even got be worse out. Because now he's got to kill off a Frothy Berserk with his face as well. Which doesn't help at this point in proceedings. I mean, this game is over. It's yeah, just I a think case of... Once the Battle Rage comes down, I'd imagine X is going to pretty swiftly concede. Although we don't know what type of player he is. He might just want to play till the end. Um, but this isn't even last hero standing, so there's no. If you if you are going to lose, there is no real value in finding out more cards in your opponent's deck because they don't have to play it against you again. They've won. I I don't like the concede in this position. If I'm not, again, um, I might be doing him a disservice. But if you're not 100% used to the tournament scene, like big stage, because it's just nice to start. Th I start thinking about my next matchup here and what I'm going to pick how I'm going to play against the, the Paladin deck next game, that sort of thing, and just yeah. take the time. Yeah, now he can't see to get on with it. Um, but you know what I'm like. I like to sit and settle, so <laughs> some players like to do that. Some, like, Blackout like to just get on with the next game. 
um, yeah. instant concede and get on with the next game because their mind works in such a way that they want to keep playing Hearthstone. Yeah, which is fine. Um, I just mm-hmm. think that uh, staying in the game, especially in Conquest, sometimes it can frustrate you more because you sat yes. in a game that you have, you know, you have lost, right? And that's the way just some matchups actually go. Sometimes, like if like you know one of two things happen at a certain point in the game, you know it's almost impossible to come back and like you said he had the challenger but with orange able to just stack into so many patrons and then still have other answers like the frothing coming down and putting a big threat on the board it's you know dr boom isn't enough with that many patrons on the board and as you pointed out he played that turn perfectly where he could have walked into the trap he just plays the acolyte waited one more turn didn't get hasty with the patrons and next turn just set up the win yeah Um, and i so a question here right in this Mm -hmm. mirror Yep. I like to just keep challenge. I've decided. I um, do, I, but I, I like to just. Keep I, I like to have double cog hammer, okay. and get one of those in the mirror. Um, I do like to keep the challenger in the mirror, especially with a hand like this, where you're not going to have the turbo start even if you throw all three of these away unless you get really lucky. Um, so I think I throw the challenger. I to keep the challenger here and throw the other two. Yeah. There yeah. may be a case for considering keeping the shredder. I don't like it, but maybe that's what he's considering. Yeah, even on our indie side though, he threw the challenger as well. And um, um, but, I, but he kept the juggler, right? Yeah, he kept the juggler and threw it. He, yeah, I think he, he had juggler for the challenger. turbo start. Um, in that case, you want to throw the challenger and try and get things like your shredders, like your belchers, because you're going to be ahead on the board and ahead in the game. And so you you can almost win the game even if your opponent has challenger. And Ixie chose to keep the shredder but get rid of the challenger. Yeah, um, there are so many good options see. here for Orange. Yeah. Cause he, I really just like coin juggler. See what your opponent does. If he plays a minion, just play Noble Sacrifice Avenge. If he doesn't play a minion, just play Mini Bot, and then yep. you just follow up with Muster. You, your juggler is actually just safe. Like it's incredible. This is one of the starts that uh, there's this start with the juggler with the secrets and the Mini Bot. Or there's well, obviously with Muster to follow up. Or there's the Secret Keeper start where you play Secret Keeper first. And then you just laugh because it's just either counted yeah, your opponent's you secret keeper. Yeah, killable minion, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, look at this now. You just play secret keeper, noble sacrifice, right? Uh, yes. Because you feel so safe, and no matter the outcome, you you you're safe. I mean, this game. Don't want to call it too early, guys, but this game might already be over because that's the spider how, might not even how, connect. Yeah, that, that's how powerful these starts can be, especially in the mirror when you have the start and your opponent doesn't. Like most mirrors, if you get the good draw and your opponent doesn't draw quite as well, you are so far ahead. And, and when the good think... draw is an early start, then it's incredible. I mean, what what does what does Ixie do here? There's no, exactly. there's just no good play. Like muster, yeah, okay, but. You have a lot of tokens. back to the mulligan where um, I mean, checked the knife juggler and got aggressive with the mulligan, throwing the challenger away. Because that he recognised that he can get a, a stupid hand a lot of the time. The juggle Whereas from even Ixie's size, the it was a bit different because he didn't have anything. So he had the option to keep the challenger and maybe get into the game that way. Um, and actually, keeping the shredder is going to turn out to have been a good thing to keep because next turn that's going to pay off for him a little bit. Yeah, and now Except Muster. This How good are these juggles? So there's one juggle, perfect. There's two juggles, fantastic, and wow. So Orange just juggles like a god. He gets all the juggles he wants and zero juggles to face. Leaves one minion up, and uh, running the Secret Keeper into the 1-1 means that his board's susceptible to Consecrate, but not susceptible to the weapon. And when your opponent has a weapon and might not have Consecrate, you don't play around the Consecrate, right? Like, that's just the the fact of life there. And the follow-up for Orange is going to be Minibot Avenge, more than likely, which, again, the board just doesn't go anywhere. And Ixie can play the Shredder, but I wouldn't be surprised if Orange just ignored it and smoked him down now. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. It's Um, 10 because of the juggle. I don't think you kill the Shredder unless... Because there's what's a potential. It, it's, it's double avenge, isn't it? Yeah, it's double yeah. avenge. So there's a potential for eleven damage. Oh, okay, so he plays the true server, so that's reduced now. But now with avenge mini bot, there's three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven damage now. And I like and this play because and the mini-bot. next turn he can kill a thing, which might be the shredder that Orange just top decked. Yeah. Um, and then play a sludge to defend his face a bit more. So I think in the long term, recognizing that he's the defender here, I think that's that's pretty much the right play. Yeah, because if, like, you know, as we were counting, it was potentially 11 damage he was going to yeah. take. So it's like, mm, you know, 11 damage, then hope 
like vouchers enough? So <laughs> here's the question: Do, do you kill the secret keep or do you kill the shredder? You have to kill one of them. I yeah. think you kill. Yeah, you kill the secret keeper because everything except one 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 and whatever drops out the shredder shouldn't yeah. survive versus the belcher. So it makes the board on your opponent's side as small as possible. Oh my god! There's always the second secret keeper. Um, <laughs> this is just insane. I just don't really. I mean, let's see what comes out of the shredder because I guess that decides a lot. And armor oh, smith, just in fantastic. case. So looking good. Um, but it does go back to okay. I keep going back to it. It's, there is a lot of um, a lot of luck in like mirror matches. But he did go for the aggressive start with his mulligan choice. So he has earned this from that mulligan decision. That was a decision that was made in this game that people might overlook. You know, he he chose that. That's something he went for. And we were talking about. Making well, he he had he had which coin... a much slower start. He wouldn't have played it yet. Yeah, he had coin and mysterious challenger. So he could have kept mysterious challenger here, but um. This is an issue now because this style of board from Orange is the style of board that Mysterious Challenger on Ixie's side does nothing. Like you yeah, just don't, exactly. you just don't care. So like that doesn't even do anything. Even if he had it, which he doesn't, so he's had to go with Juggler and then um, drop the Shredder. All that does is gain him extra armor, and uh, and then there's a reasonable card as well. So Lothab yeah. to follow up any uh, secret or uh, you know, as we can see, Blessing of Kings shenanigans, and that should be game. I'm always a bit hesitant to call it because I've called games that aren't over, mm. but I even like it, this. She's going to, to need to top deck one. something that we haven't thought of to win this game. Uh, is there a card that exists yet? So there is Consecrate, which would have been very, very nice on turn but four. Costing nine makes it really difficult yeah. about now. Um, yeah, nine's kind of messy. Yeah, I. There's just no... I mean, all there is is boom, right? Shredder, There's lethal on both. Shredder into um, something with Torn. Shredder into a Neutron. I don't think that's enough, because he can't kill anything, right? He so the Taunt... He could... Oh, I see. He's trying to stay alive to... Yeah, and that's it. ...to consecrate next turn. And there we go, guys. Orange takes it 3-1. And we'll be seeing him again tomorrow in the top eight of Assembly Winter 2016. Yeah, Ixie did uh, did well, but I think that um, one Orange has the experience, uh, and you know, like the sort of he did actually. I was messaging him beforehand just to say like, oh, you know, are you ready for your match, blah blah, just so we could organise it because we're actually telling the players when to go, and he messaged me back saying, yeah, don't worry about this match, it'll be over pretty quick, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. you know, that that level of confidence and his experience and the fact he's on form recently and some good draws. Let's be honest. Uh, really helped Orange close out that set there, and Ixie, I think, just got got the rough end of the stick. I don't yeah, think he, that was particularly anything that looked together. bad I don't again. Think he but... did anything bad or anything. Um, just just one of those. And sometimes the lineups decide these matchups as well. I mean, it was going to come down to something where the Druid was going to be unfavoured anyway, even if Ixie did win that game. So Orange possibly the slightly superior lineup, something like that as well. Playing that Hunter in the first game, getting straight through with that as he does. Yeah. Maybe to other people would start bringing Hunter sometime soon. Yeah, uh, we do have some other results through, by the way. Yeah, I was just going to go through all the, uh, the the winners that we have so far. So in Group A, we had Talk and Orange, as, as we've just seen, are going to go through to tomorrow. Group B, we have uh, Synthetic and Vortex, who we saw play in the first match tonight. Uh, they're going through, and uh, Powder and Maynard didn't make it. Um, group C, Blackout went through, and again, we saw his match. And the guy he beat, Techno Goose, actually went through as well. So even though he lost to Blackout, he managed to win his like final match uh, to get through. And Wampy and that guy didn't go through. Uh, and the final group, Group D, Spo has already gone through as the 2-0 victor. Um, Kalex is on uh, a, a game, and we don't actually have an update for the scores uh, for the other games. Because Ursi is uh, known for not the fastest player in the world. So I think some of those games are still going on. So, But I have linked the bracket in chat, guys. So if you keep that open later tonight, you know it will update as and when the scores are done. So... That's going to be it for us, guys. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We've had loads of viewers today, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and we will be back tomorrow, which is going to be, if I open the schedule, uh, we're looking at starting at um, uh, 1 p.m. GMT, uh, which is 3.15 EET, which is the, um, the local time for the tournament. And we're going to have... All of the playoffs, the semi-finals, and the finals. So we have a total of seven matches. And Lorinda, you're joining me again tomorrow, right? 
definitely do need tomorrow. I'm looking forward to this. I'm pretty stacked top eight. Uh, there's one or two people that players people may not have heard of, but trust me, some of these guys are really good. I mean, the qualifiers came through 256 man qualifiers, yeah, and only four from each one got <laughs> through. So, yeah, they had a lot of work to do there. Uh, Kalax, if he gets through, is a guy I keep saying I think is going to possibly he's even the dark qualify horse for the, the championships. Event, right? Yeah, he's somebody that. He's. If you look at his ladder rankings, he keeps coming. I know ladder rankings not everything, but he keeps coming like top ten, top thirty, and yeah, he's somebody to watch out for. Yeah. So that's gonna be it from us guys tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Enjoy. See you tomorrow.